Hello and welcome to this Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Leah Rosen, the online editor for BPI. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We have muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for our speaker in the chat window on your screen. After the presentation, we will begin the question and answer portion, because this is, after all, Ask the Expert, and I will ask our speaker your questions from the chat window. Your questions in the chat window will only be visible to myself and our speaker. Thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Fletcher Malcolm from Repligen. Hi. Thank you and welcome to our WebEx today, and good morning and good afternoon. Uh, today's web WebEx will be about um, large-scale prepack columns. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, I work at Replogen on the downstream side of our business in product management and focus mainly on our Opus prepack column technology. So I'm going to jump right into the slides. And first slide I have is just a little bit about Replogen for those of you who may uh, not be familiar with who we are as a company. This slide gives you a quick summary. And as you can see, we've been around for a long time, and our core business is protein A ligand manufacturing. So we manufacture ligand and sell it to some of the large uh, industry vendors, uh, who you can probably guess. So uh, most of the world's monoclonal antibodies are actually purified on a protein A ligand, which is manufactured by Replogen. And you see that uh, in our revenue streams uh, with the pie chart below where most of our revenue does in fact come from our ligand business. But in addition to that, we have our protein A um, resins, some of, some of which we sell in commercial applications, uh, two commercial applications. These are older legacy resins. We have pre-packed column technology. That's what we're here to talk about today. And then our newly acquired ATF business from refined technologies that's alternating tangential flow. We have two, two sites. Uh, both sites do manufacturing, and we have about 140 employees, and we're a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ. So um, just an overview of Opus, uh, where we are today. So a few weeks ago, we launched our largest prepack column, which is now the 60-centimeter ID column, which is a, there's an image on that, an image on the slide down on the right. And these columns follow our business model for Opus overall, which uh, is flexibility, robust design, and quality. So flexibility, bed heights uh, from 5 to 30 centimeters. We pre-pack those with any resin uh, from any manufacturer. And this makes our platform, uh, our technology very platformable. With the, the addition of our larger columns, uh, we're able to purify harvest from large-scale bioreactors um, say 1,000 and 2,000 liter, uh, maybe not large scale in the sense of uh, the total industry, but large in the sense of pre-packed and disposable uh, technologies. And then from a quality standpoint, our columns are uh, designed for multi-use. Um, they are packed in a state-of-the-art packing facility with a uh, ISO 7 classified clean room. That's equivalent of class C or class 10,000. And they come with uh, the required documents to use them in GMP manufacturing. And if we were to cut a column in half, uh, many of you might be interested to see what it looks like. Here we have uh, the top cap uh, in black and bottom cap in black. And then blue is a, a side guard, also the same rigid plastic. These are non-product contact components. So this, um, this schematic here shows, again, what happens when you cut a column in half. And the product contact components, which are the inlet the outlet is over here. The tube flow distributors, there's two flow distributors which are identical. Uh, polypropylene mesh which sits, which sits on top of the both flow distributors and then a platinum cured silicon return line. So these are proven plastics that are used uh, throughout the range of our columns. To date we have about 34 columns in, um, excuse me, we have columns in about 34 clinical campaigns. Um, total of 80, about 85 columns, range of different sizes, um, up to 45 and 60. So we've seen broad acceptance in the industry of the materials. They are low leaching, 
they are class six and uh, EMEA compliant. So just to give you a quick overview, this is going to be very brief uh, around what the Opus line uh, is. Some of you may, this may be a review, so I'm going to move quickly. We have a variety of different bed heights we can pack. This means that for our large scale columns, we can pack a bed height anywhere from 5 to 30 centimeters. That could mean uh, 6 centimeters or 18 centimeters or 22 centimeters. Then we have uh, our 11 industry standard diameters ranging from 1.2 all the way up to 60. Again, the uh, 45 and 60 centimeter columns are the newest edition, the 60 being launched just a few weeks ago at BDP Week in uh, Huntington Beach, California. And then we pack a variety of different resins in the column. So you can see up here on the screen a uh, variety of different affinity, ion exchange, mixed mode resins. Really a, a wide range, and this is just a sample list. So all of the bed height flexibility that we have, the diameter, um, the range of diameters, and uh, the resins that we pack make our technology in general very platformable. And with the addition of uh, the 45 and 60 centimeter columns, we can now purify harvests from 1,000 and 2,000 liter bioreactors, which makes the technology more scalable and more appealing for the future. I just wanted to give you a little bit of data uh, now in the next couple of slides specific to 60 centimeter columns. Um, so this is an experiment that we ran in our applications lab where we're looking at packing performance and scalable performance. Um, so we take an unmodified Cephro 6 fast flow bead, we pack that in a 60 centimeter column, and um, we get a chromatogram that looks similar to, or looks what it looks like is what's on the right side of the screen with blue dextrone, dextran, BSA, and acetone. So um, we can look at that and say the peak shapes look good, that's reflective of a well-packed bed, and then we can also look at the column, the table, excuse me, on the left-hand side of the screen, which shows 2.5, 20, and 60 centimeter ID columns and the resolution factors uh, between the different compounds. And as you can see, they all look similar. So this is a measure of scalability. If these numbers were significantly different, then uh, we would not necessarily have a scalable product range. Oops, one. One, 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 one forward. So, um, of course, another question, commonly asked question that we get is uh, shipping. Can you ship these columns? So we performed the same test with both 45 and 60, uh, as well as some of our smaller columns. But I'm showing you here a 60 centimeter column test. It was done, uh, again, with that same Sephiro 6 fast flow bead, uh, same column. And co column is shipped in a custom built crate. You see an image of uh, the inside of the crate on the right side of the screen. And then we did a, a standard International Safe Transit Authority test, which the schedule of the test is up here on the slide in the table. So atmospheric, atmospheric conditioning, controlled temperature and humidity, compression testing, random vibration testing, and rotational drop testing. So really, this is a worst case scenario for shipping. And uh, it's designed to uh, put a lot of stress on the, the packaging as well as the column inside. So for results, we uh, in visually inspect the packaging. That's the wood uh, crate. Again, that's the picture of the, of the boxed up crate, uh, which has a column in it on the right. And then we look at the chromatography. So uh, the pre-ship and post-ship results are shown here on the slide. Um, and you see there are some differences, but um, not necessarily within a significant range not more than 20% change in either asymmetry or plate count. So again, this is a worst case scenario where the column got vibrated uh, for over an hour. It got dropped several times and um, really just a worst case handling. So at this point in time, uh, we've had a lot of experience column shipping. We've shipped over 850, 900 columns around the world. We've never had one fail uh, for a packed bed. Uh, excuse me, we've never had a packed bed failure. So have a lot of experience here. We spent a lot of time on shipping, and uh, this is really crucial data for uh, all of our end users where we ship columns around the world. Um, and um, this shows that, uh, again, we have validated or at least qualified the packaging and the methods of shipping for our larger scale columns. And then as I 
as I saw from one of our poll questions, costs can sometimes be a challenge with implementing pre-packed columns. And so one way that we have developed a tool to help us understand some of the costs are a model that we put together with bioprocess technology consultants. That's Howard Levine's group, uh, which they're outside of Boston. Uh, we're outside of Boston as well. And we have this model, which is shown here on the slide. Slide. This is just an output. Um, and what it shows is a self-packed 60-centimeter column versus a self-packed pre, excuse me, self-packed 60-centimeter column versus a pre-packed 60-centimeter column. And it looks at the number of times you might amortize a 60-centimeter glass column or self-packed column, and then the number of campaigns you might use a 60-centimeter pre-packed column. What we found over time is that people are, are not using our larger prepack columns only once for one campaign, they're using them for multiple campaigns. And so making sure that we amortize the cost over those uh, multiple campaigns is important as we think about um, our life cycle cost analysis. And so in the end, what this model shows is that um, you can achieve savings of roughly $20,000 with uh, pre-packed columns versus self-packed columns. And this is something that um, we've had validated by other clients. Um, the, um, a lot of the savings come from the labor reduction. So you see on the right-hand side of the slide, we have about 97 hours of savings. Uh, this has been also published uh, by Gallup. Uh, now PC on pharmaceuticals, they've reported up to 150 hours of savings. And I've heard a large variety in general. So significant savings uh, from labor costs with pre-packed columns, and this is where um, a lot of your uh, benefits will come from. So now I'm going to just wrap up with conclusions and then open, we'll open up the forum for questions. And as you can see, uh, this is just some statistics of where we are in our program today. We launched our GMP columns in 2012, early 2012. Since then, we have acquired more than 50 customers. Um, most of this is because we have the open platform approach where you can specify the bed height, the resin, and uh, the column ID. Very flexible program, very fl fl flexible business model. And we've had, because of that, we've already had a number of columns get into phase one and three campaigns, um, including a number of 45 centimeter columns and uh, 60 centimeter columns will uh, occur uh, this year. Um, as we just launched the product and we are already shipping. We've shipped the first one and we're shipping more uh, very soon. So all in all, a lot of um, success with the program. And at this point, I will open it up for questions. Okay, great. Thanks, Fletcher. And just a reminder, you can type your questions into the chat window. So do the columns come with a certificate of analysis? Yes, yeah, so that's a good question. Um, all of our columns, when they leave our facility are, um, or after they're packed, are tested uh, for asymmetry, plate count, any other specifications that we may have, like bioburden and endotoxin. And all of that data goes on the certificate of analysis, which then gets shipped with the columns. And what environment are the columns made in? Yeah, so the columns are made in an ISO 7 classified clean room. Um, and this is a, uh, actually you see an image of it on the slide, in the background of the slide. And these are um, ISO 7 packing rooms, and we have uh, two of those, and an ISO 8 buffer prep room, uh, which is all part of one packing suite. So we welcome you to come and visit. If you're ever in the Boston area, we're very close by and um, all of our columns are actually packed in uh, Waltham, Massachusetts, uh, which is where our headquarters are, is, and that's just outside of Boston. So what does it mean to, uh, when you say multi-use, and how many cycles can be run on the columns? Yeah, so that's a really good question, and the real answer is it depends, um, and it depends on your process, and it depends on uh, the cleanliness of your feed stream. But in general, what we found is if you have a well-developed process and you have um, mechanisms where you're filtering out, uh, say, the bad stuff uh, that might clog the head of the column, then 
our columns can be run for potentially hundreds of cycles. We've done analysis in our internal lab to show with uh, buffer recirculation that the packed bed and the column hardware is stable uh, to right around 100 cycles. We haven't uh, gone further than that, um, but that's where we stopped the experiment. From an end user perspective, I can tell you that we have um, the most somebody has run a column is a 45 centimeter column packed with a protein A resin and it is, uh, it has seen 25 cycles of harvest and um, clarified harvest that is, and it's still working well. So um, we've had good success with reuse. Um, it is a good question. And if you're still concerned with it, it's something that you could actually model on a small scale. And can customers send replogen resin for column packing? Yes, so customers can send resin from col for column packing. We have the option where you could either, as the end user, purchase the resin and send it to Replogen, or we can procure the resin for you and then pack it. Um, most clients do, do opt for us to procure, procure the resin. Um, um, however, with some of our larger columns, it's about half and half uh, between whether people decide to send us the resin or have us procure it. And what is the typical lead time for 45 and 60 centimeter columns? Yep, typical lead time is um, right around eight weeks. And we are dedicated to reducing the lead time this year. We're investing more in some of our manufacturing resources, but a good estimate is eight weeks. And what is the maximum bed height that you can pack? Yeah, so it's a good question. The maximum bed height that we can pack, it, it varies slightly uh, with ID, but in general, it's 30 centimeters. Okay, thank you, Fletcher. I think that is uh, about all the questions we have. If we didn't get to your question, Fletcher will respond to you and follow up in email. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.